Hello everybody, welcome to the United Way TV. I'm Rob Dukan, your daily presenter of the show. So today we'll talk a lot about uh, Manchester United transfer, latest news. Today's Saturday, you know, Saturday, the 1st of July. We have to kick in. Look, we cannot start doing transfers when we don't really know who our manager is because no matter how you put it, right? Yes, uh, the Inos group wants to have managers in which, uh, which can work with uh, a, a certain players and they want the managers to play a certain way. But a manager needs to have at least some saying in the players that they bring. Some saying, I didn't say total saying. So guys, I just want to continue by asking you, by asking you guys, please make sure you click the like on the video. For all of you who have subscribed, you are legends. We want to be doing this live so we can interact with each other. You get to know me and we, you know, we exchange our, our opinions on fans. But we want to hit just 10,000 subscribers. If you can just be subscribing every day, 50, 50 subscribers every day, we can hit that in, in a couple of um, weeks. So please, guys, share the videos. That's very important. Thanks for all of you. By the way, uh, Prince as well. You know who I'm talking about. Well, the biggest news here is United are going for a youth prayer. Uh, in the name of uh, Lenny Yo Yoro, Yono, Le Lenny Yono, I don't just want to say. So uh, Lenny Yono is being looked by Manchester United. The thing is that uh, United, he's a player who plays for Lille, defender. Um, he reminds me of uh, a certain player, Rafael Veran, who left uh, Manchester United. Look, I know most of you might not know a little bit about the French League if you don't know. So Lenny, uh, Rafael Veran, when he was bought by uh, Manchester, uh, bought, bought by Real Madrid, he was a kid like that, a very young kid. He went there uh, to Real Madrid and then he uh, kind of improved himself in uh, and became a very good player in Real Madrid. Hence. Uh, uh, hence, uh, uh, Manchester United took him later to the team. So uh, I think that is what United are looking for. But you know what? For United to have a very good play, for United to bring such players, they need to have good senior players. So who are the senior players that might help guide the young Lenny Yono uh, to uh, Manchester United? So uh, Le 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 uh, Lenny Yoro, who... Who, who is this guy? I think most of you might be asking, who is this guy? How What is his attributes? He's very good. He's just popped up in the season this year, Lille. He, is, um, he has had a fantastic uh, season with Lille uh, as a defender. Very physical, you know. And uh, some are comparing him to Rafael Veran when Veran started. It was something similar. I watched Veran's game in the European Cup, one of his first games. Veran started playing in, in Lens. When he was, I think, 17, 16, 16, and they have been 17, he was that good. So, but uh, talking again, you know, with Manchester United, there's always a pro and a con. And the con of this story is that there is another play, uh, team, PSG, we're hearing again, yeah, that PSG have, have done, have, have had and have an agreement for French wonder kid defender linked to Manchester United. So, you see how it, things are moving from one day to another. That's why I'm telling you guys to subscribe and because we will be breaking these stories to you guys on a daily basis and uh, asking your opinion as well. What is your view in regards to such signing? I don't know. Should we go for the young players? How will you approach? It's also not the question of if we should go. The problem, the question should be if we are able, able to... Um, to, to, to continue with this trend of bringing young players. Yes, United, we do have Kobe Mwenu, we have uh, Rafael Veran, we have Rasmus, we have these are all very young players. Bringing another player, it could be good for a long term, but for the short term, I think we should do, We no matter how you, what I'm trying to say is, no matter how United signed players this season, we have to bring some players who are kind of experienced, who have baggages, you know, coming with some experience. Uh, uh, and uh, that is why, that, will be, that brings me up to the second uh, news, which is flirting around now in Manchester United, that Manchester United are uh, in for this guy. Uh, uh, Le uh, Leipzig, uh, Danny Omo. Olmo, Danny Olmo. So he's a Spanish player, midfielder. I don't know if most of you have seen uh, him play. He plays for Habi uh, Leipzig. Um, it's, he is more a creative player. He, he plays, I mean, if you're asking, you want to know what the kind of creative player he is before thinking if he fits the United system, is he's, uh, he, I would say he is kind of Bruno Fernandes, maybe even more because he he's a good dribbler as well as he, he is not really focused on scoring goals, but focused on feeding the attack. That, that I mean, for all the games I've watched this guy, I started watching him when he was playing in Spain, in Spain, uh, before he went to Abbey Leipzig. Um, and uh, I am impressed. I think United, if we can get a player like this, this will change a lot. 
Look, I want to tell you guys, you are fans. You know football as well as I do. You might have a different perspective. We'll talk about Ten Hag a little bit. Well, about perspective, right? But what system do you want United to play? A counter-attacking football or a possession-based football? Because from my understanding, the Inos groups want United to be more to 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 play uh, to play a more possess possess based football, which means we need to have players who can really keep the ball. If you are a watcher of this channel, you know I kept saying that I would love two players to be to be uh, to be sold. Two most important uh, important players in United to be sold for United to play the football we have to play. I mentioned Rashford and I mentioned Bruno. Now I'm thinking Bruno can play this this football because it, Portugal does do it the possession of base football, but Marcus Rashford won't. And I will repeat this. I've said this on my on my around five videos that Marcus Rashford, PSG, Marcus Rashford will go to PSG. Nobody has told me. It's just a logical move. I think the reason why I say Marcus Rashford this season might go to PSG, it's simple. It's because I think PSG, with Mbappe leaving, they need to buy a very good attacker who is going to score them goals. Yes, Rashford might not be scoring. It's not an attacker. But let me tell you something. If Rashford is on fire, he can be really flair. So I think there will be an approach on Rashford this summer. Uh, I think it's even good that he's not going to the Euros. Maybe that plays a good role. But I, I, I tell you, Marcus Rashford, will, personally, I think he will want to stay and prove people wrong. But I think if PSG comes to Manchester United with 70 or 80 million, United will take the money for Marcus Rashford. So tell me what you think about below. Another story that is uh, on the papers is um, uh, Jean-Claude Tedibo. I don't know if you guys, uh, you know, well, you can see him on the on the on the thumbnail, Tedibo. He has uh, that's the, the Nice player, and for those of you who don't know, Nice is partly owned by Inos, Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Uh, there is an issue going on even now that Manchester United might be relegated to the European League because one of their owners do own two football clubs playing the same system. But guess what? City has. Girardin, who in Spain, who is going to play the Champions League, and City is playing the Champions League. You see, so I, 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 I'm a little bit rambling around this because of my frustration. Because see, City, it works for City, but it doesn't work for Manchester United. I just don't know the way these people sleep at night when they they cannot really uh be uh they cannot be even handed when they make all these decisions. I think Manchester United honestly um will solve this issue. It's not a, a massive issue for Manchester United because I think we can we we will find a way through. You know, look, we can I mean United we, we might be bad on the pitch, but I think United is a financial power. So it's a huge, massive mistake we're making, thinking we might not do well. Guys, if you are getting some value in these videos, please make sure you click a like on the video. We want to hit that 10K, that 10K. We are just under 7,000. On we are around six thousand um, more subscribers, which both of you guys can do it. So please and thanks for all of you who have subscribed so far. But please share these videos; it will be so important for us to hit uh, because we want to bring journalists here. We want to bring those uh, of people you read on tablets to, to to get your to answer your question rather than me uh, exchanging my opinion with you guys. So Jean Claude Tadibo has come out and said he's very happy with the interest he has from England. He was pushed and asked if he wanted to come to Manchester United, and he said that was a good one. So you know you can see that it's a it's a player that has been um, that has been well trained. So he I, what do I mean by this? He doesn't run his mouth. He, he keeps things, he keeps his cards so close to his chest. And this is how a professional should be. So, and don't forget that Totem Hotspur was eager to buy Teddy Bo. Uh, I mean, in January, they wanted to buy him. And he is uh, now, and uh, the only, I mean, they wanted to buy him, which uh, I think they turned it down. But let me tell you this. The only reason why, one of the main reasons why Manchester United fans believe Teddy Bo will play for Manchester next season is because he plays for a club owned by our co-owner, Ineos. Look, if Tedibo goes to another team, then uh, we have to start putting a massive X cross like this on Sergi Miracle. That is a fraud. Why? Because in any business which you know, you know your you always has to feed you always have to feed your cash cow. Hope you know what I mean. What mean what what it means by cash cow? It is a section in the business that that actually uh uh gives you more uh, revenue. So Manchester United, the revenue for Manchester United is I think half a billion yearly. And um, I think I think I, I I I think 
it's clearly uh, uh, more more I would say Jim Radcliffe clearly will make more money in Manchester United than Lille. So obviously the priority has to be Manchester United if he has that long term um, uh, affination of buying the club, as we hear by the journalist. So uh, that is where I am with uh, with this story. So um, yeah. Um, so what do we have here again? Uh, yeah, coming back to uh, to uh, the Jean-Claude Tedibo, I think Tedibo is the kind of player we need. His value in the market will be roughly 50, within 40 and 50 million pounds for defender. And well, talking about that sum, United, we need to sell. And that is what, why if you watch the video yesterday, I will tell you to go to that video yesterday and watch about Mason Greenwood. It's, it's a cracking one. Very simple reasons why Greenwood have to leave Manchester United. Reasons why Manchester United will sell Greenwood who has nothing to do with his actions out of the pitch because uh, we have to raise money, guys. I mean, if you are rational, I mean, all of you watching these videos, you have a job. You pay rent. You pay maximum bills if you own a property. So you know that there is, at the end of the day, there must be a balance in order for things to move on. So United is not owned by uh, an alligator or, well... Not, it's owned by business people, not oligarchs. It's not owned by... Uh, 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 we, we don't have oil money pumping out there. What we have is a structure that ha that has been working, but um, we are trying to oil the structure, if you understand what I'm talking about. So that is... Uh, um, well. That is why we have to be very careful the way we spend our money in, in, the, in the transfer window. Hence, we need to be very smart doing so. So with Tedibo, we know Tedibo is there. Brantworth, Brantworth also, Jared Brantworth, he plays for the England. He is a, a, a 20 years old, plays for Everton. He's been valued between 50 and 60 million pounds. For It depends on who you, you speak with. Um, who will you prefer, Jared Brantworth or Tedibo? Look, we, have to, we will go for one of them. That's clear. We will go for one of them. It's just clear. If we we will go for one of them, and then we will have to bring another player. Look, Manchester United for us who have a good season. This will be the question of the video. What will be a good season transfer for Manchester United? Drop your comments below. But I can help you. Do we have that? We 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 have heard United uh, team has said where they have to buy a defender. They have to buy also a midfielder and an attacker. What about the left back? What about the right back? But, I mean, I think United needs to buy an attacker. We need two defenders. I talk about one, two defenders, and they should be holding. Kobe Menu has to be a more a creative defender. Either we keep um, Amrabat and buy another defender, so there will be three, because Amrabat is an utility player. You know what an utility player is? Someone who can play for several in several positions. Amrabat should stay. Or make a sole video and any shorts and explain to you guys why Amrabat should stay. So United, we are not printing money. We are not. Uh, I mean, we will not be spreading money. So we need to be very smart in making decisions. There must be a rational decision keeping players. And um, we need a defender, top defender. We need even two defender, because if something, I'm a bit worried. We're talking about Ten Hag staying. I'm a bit worried that Ten Hag stays with the same players and they bring in just three or four players who are not very good. And uh, we still have the problem of injuries and we suffer next season and he's get, he, gets, he gets the sack even if he stays. Talking about staying and leaving Ten, Eric Ten Hag, I think the decision will be this week. My feeling, my gut is telling me that Ten Hag will, will, will stay. They will keep Ten Hag. And I think when Ten Hag stays, he has the first five games, he will demand a contract. He will demand a contract, Eric Ten Hag. Um... He'll have to extend his contract or he goes for free. Uh, um, I think um, uh, Eric Tenak will stay. Why? We, you, you know this old cliche uh, that uh, justice delay is denied. If, if Tenak had to be sacked, as it was said before the game, as the decision was already there before the game, they would have sacked him. But after him winning and the performance which he did, they tried to reconsider the negative performance in Manchester United this season. So my gut, my gut is telling me that Ten Hag will stay. And this is the way we has to be. So guys, tell me what you think. Because next week we'll be sitting here. Ten Hag will stay with Manchester United, I, I think, before Wednesday. The Champions League is today. I'm a Real Madrid fan. Sancho, I'm sorry. Uh, Real Madrid is one of the teams that made me really love the game. And, uh, I, and I wish them to win, honestly. And I think they will win. They are just a better side. But yeah, tell me what you think about um, uh, the, uh, about the video. Tell me what you think about not Ten Hag. I'm tired about that. But I know by Wednesday, uh, uh, 
we have heard from uh, journalists like James Jacob, uh, Jacob, sorry, uh, who has said uh, he thinks uh, the, the the Ineos will take their time with this. But um, the speculation out there is that uh, the first week of June, well, we will know the future of our manager. Okay, guys, thanks for those of you who have watched lovely video. Just 15 minutes. We'll try to be doing 10 to 15 minutes. We will analyze all the stories uh, daily, 10 to 15 minutes. So, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Share this video with everybody. Every time you see the video, the United Way, we have our banner on our right, on your on your left, upper left, so that's on my right. And uh, please click the uh, click the video, click the like on the video, share the video, and uh, we'll be doing live stream. When we hit that 10,000K, it will be you asking questions. We'll be talking to Fabrizio Romano. I've said this many times that we have to have contacted some interesting journalists, but I can't do that because we have a smaller community. That's just the way it works in YouTube. In, uh, uh, on YouTube. So I'm counting on you guys that we can take this uh, project, your project, uh, forward. And uh, yeah. So tell me what you like in the video. I've asked you guys, Jared Brantway or Tedibo, who will you take? Drop your comments below. I'm ready to reply in now. Without saying, guys, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.